Is the Porsche 718 Cayman the best sports coupe reasonable money can buy? You'd have a pretty tough time arguing otherwise. For an insight into just how far ahead of its rivals this car really is, you need look no further than the fact that it's most regularly compared to its 911 stablemate, which costs about half as much again. In this 718, guys, the Cayman's classic mid-engined rear-wheel drive layout remains, but has been further developed with the addition of a more powerful flat-four engine that claims to have reinvented this car for a new era. Add in sleeker looks that really offer up that want-one factor, and you're looking at an obvious choice in its segment, a supercar in all but price tag. For years, lots of experts have told us that the purest Porsche you can buy is the Cayman Coupe, now the most affordable car the company makes. We've grown familiar with this car since we first saw it in 2005, and over that time, it has certainly changed. Never, though, so fundamentally as this. Welcome to the 718 Cayman. 718, what's that about? Well, the badge references Porsche's 718 racing models of the 50s and 60s that swept to victory in events like the Targa Florio, Sebring and Le Mans. In doing so though, it also references something much more significant, the flat four engine used then and for the first time in a Cayman used now too. It's hard to overstate the importance of this change. After all, ever since this car's original introduction way back in 1996, a sonorous, normally aspirated flat six power plant has been an integral part of its appeal. The market, though, expects this car to get faster and more efficient with every successive model evolution, which simply wasn't going to happen if it stayed with the 6. On top of that, Porsche had become concerned about the way that sales of this Cayman and its Boxster open-top counterpart were affecting the market penetration of the brand's pricier and more profitable 911 models. Greater differentiation was needed between these two different segments of the company's range. Hence, in 2016, this 718K model's adoption of smaller capacity flat four turbo power. Now it wasn't a move calculated to please the purists but then those people have short memories. Far from betraying Porsche's heritage the switch here to four cylinders is in many ways more appropriate for a compact relatively affordable roadster of this sort. After all the first ever Porsche road car the 356 model of 1948 was a mid-engine four-cylinder machine and the very design that could well have inspired the Cayman the 550 coupe of 1953 had four cylinders. So too in the 80s and 90s did Porsche models like the 924, the 944 and the 968. And more recently the brand has won the World Endurance Championship and Le Mans with its 919 LMP1 racer which uses a turbo four-cylinder petrol electric power plant. So, plenty of reasons why such a fundamental change to this car might be relevant, necessary, even desirable. But along with upgrades to the driving dynamics, plus changes to the styling, the cabin and the media connectivity, does it all add up to a real improvement? Well, we're going to try this 982 series model and find out. So. What's it like? Has Porsche really spoiled this car by changing its power plant so radically? More to the point, how can it not have done? After all, you wouldn't usually massively slash the size of any car's engine and then expect it to drive, sound and perform just as it did before. Yet, Porsche is promising us exactly that with this 718 Cayman range, despite its switch from flat six to flat four power. Time to fire it up and match the rhetoric to reality. Well, the initial flare is fine, but now, listen to that. If you've owned a Cayman in the past, that'll be an unfamiliar melody and one that for the first time is turbo-tuned. Now, most seem to find the note reminiscent of uh, Subaru WRX STI. That's another car that features a turbocharged flat four. But whatever you think about the orchestral origins, that sound isn't the kind of thing you expect to hear in a Porsche, which isn't to say that it's unpleasant. Although privately, the Stuttgart engineers will tell you that development versions of this engine sounded a bit like an early Volkswagen Beetle. What we've ended up with here is something that's actually quite smooth and characterful, especially when you mate it to the optional sports exhaust system. So, time to put it 
to the test. Now accelerate quickly up to speed and if you know your Caymans then two things will probably strike you. First, that the wonderful whale of that old flak 6 is missing and second, that you don't really care about any of that because this car is so damn fast. Properly spine tinglingly, and almost frighteningly fast, just as Porsche told you it would be. Now the power plants used here are smaller bore versions of the 6 and the unit that's used in the company's 911 model. Although in this case, the flat four is assisted by one turbo rather than two. This seems to be quite sufficient though for performance gauge, able to easily outweigh the reductions in overall engine capacity, uh, which counts for the car's urge and preference to just hurl itself towards the horizon at every opportunity. So you're getting the idea, this is a proper performance engine and a good deal more exotic than the four cylinder power plants used in rivals like Alfa Romeo's 4C, the Alpine 110 and the Audi TTS, all sports coupes that use four pot units they originally developed for and transplanted from much humbler cars. It's pretty powerful too, even in its entry level two litre guys, Porsche's flat four puts out 300 bhp and that's up from the 275 bhp output of the previous uh, 2.7 litre normally aspirated flat six unit. Turbo lag? Well, there's very little of that thanks to a clever dynamic boost feature that leaves the throttle open for a couple of seconds after you come off the accelerator. So boost pressure won't drop off when the engine's off the boil as it ordinarily might in a conventional turbo unit. What lag remains is completely eradicated in the even more desirable 2.5 litre 718 Cayman S that we're trying here thanks to clever VTG, variable turbine geometry technology that's borrowed from the brand's top 911 turbo model. Now this uses adjustable vanes in the uh, turbine's inlet to better direct the exhaust gases and more quickly build the boost. It all means that if no one told you this car wasn't normally aspirated, we think you'd be really unlikely to guess the fact. So there are no impediments to enjoyment of the power on offer, which in the case of this 718 Cayman S means 350 bhp, and that's up from the 325 bhp produced by the old, normally aspirated 3.4 litre flat six. As we suggested earlier, uh, pushing on in this 718 model doesn't give you the uh, feeling the old normally aspirated 981 series came and offered of a gradual building of power accompanied by glorious changes of noise. Uh, now, if you do want that, then we'd direct you towards the supercharged V6 in the Jaguar F-Type. But in compensation, the torque you get here hits the tarmac earlier from under 2000 RPM, and you can rev the thing to 7500 RPM if you're looking to replicate Porsche's quoted performance figures. The bottom line with those is that today's standard 2.0-litre 718 Cayman can be pretty much just as quick as the previous flat six Cayman S, assuming you specify the current car with Porsche's seven-speed PDK auto transmission setup and you use the launch control system that's included in the optional Sport Chrono pack. And that, guys, the entry-level 2.0-litre 718 manages the 62 miles an hour benchmark in 4.7 seconds, while if you stick to the manual gearbox in that base model, uh, that figure falls to 5.1 seconds. Uh, top speed's rated at 158 miles an hour for the PDK variant and 168 for the manual model. This 2.5 litre 718 Cayman S uh, improves those figures, of course, to 4.4 seconds with launch control or 4.6 seconds with the manual stick shift. Top speed, well, that's 177 miles an hour. For overtaking, most of the mid-range punch that you'll want is delivered at about 4,500 RPM. But if by any chance that's not enough and you happen to have specified your 718 model with PDK auto and transmission and that optional sport chrono pack, I mentioned earlier, then an extra sport response button is provided on the steering wheel. Press that and you precondition the drivetrain for maximum acceleration over a short but frantic 20 second period. So we don't have sport response here because we've elected to stick with the standard six speed manual gearbox for this test, but we do have the driving modes dial that that button would sit on, uh, and that's another feature that comes with that sport chrono pack. 
If you've experienced uh, almost any kind of relatively expensive, modern, performance oriented model, you'll probably be already familiar with the concept of selectable driving modes. Now in this case there are normal, sport and sport plus settings and there's also a further individual option if you can't decide and you want to program the dynamic responses of your Cayman uh, in the same way that a race driver would dial in his race car. As usual with setups of this sort, uh, the different modes alter throttle response, steering feel, uh, stability control thresholds, and on the auto models, the gear shift timings too. Plus, the settings will also tweak the suspension feel if you've got your Cayman fitted with the optional PASM, Porsche Active Suspension Management Adaptive Damping System. Now, standard PASM lowers the car by 10 millimeters, or if you have a 718 Cayman S, uh, you can opt for a more track-focused sports setup that lowers the car by 20 20 millimeters. Now we think you're going to want PASM if you plan to drive and corner this car hard, which is after all where this Cayman is in its element and sets itself apart from rivals like Audi's TTS and BMW's M2. Thanks to the advantages of its mid-engine configuration, this Porsche was always a class leader in that regard. Now it's even better thanks to the adoption of new thicker anti-roll bars, wider rear wheels, uh, redeveloped Pirelli P0 tyres and revised spring and dampers that are part of a redesigned rear suspension system and that was influenced by the old and much lauded hardcore Cayman GT4 model. There's a different steering system too, the rack another carryover from the top 3.8 litre 911 turbo and featuring response that's quickened by about 10% over the previous generation Cayman. The result is an immediate response to every driver input, especially if, as here, you've got your car fitted with the optional PTV Porsche torque vectoring system. Now operating in conjunction with a mechanical rear differential lock, this setup works by varying the amount of torque transmitted to the rear wheels. So drive hard into a corner and PTV will apply moderate brake pressure to the inside rear wheel, shifting more drive force to the outside wheel and maximizing traction. Now you won't feel this happening, but you will feel how quick it makes this car feel on your favorite twisting B road. Small wonder then that in testing, this came and proved to be dramatically quicker than its direct predecessor around the fearsome Nürburgring Nordschleife racetrack. Even without the electronic aids though, this is without doubt the most satisfying sports coupe in its segment. Perhaps even the most satisfying sports car available at any price. In every situation, the balance and poise this model is famed for are delivered in abundance. The car feels flat and agile through the bends and they see it change direction in a way that none of its rivals can match. The result, if you're lucky enough to find an empty, challenging, twisty piece of road, is an experience to be relished. Reassuringly, the brakes are better this time around too. The 2.0-litre model using the system from the previous generation Cayman S and this 2.5-litre variant using the very effective stopping setup you'll find on a 911 Carrera. If you do want to go further, uh, you'll need the pricey optional ceramic composite discs. But if you're going fast enough to get the benefit of those on the public road, well, you might as well finish your drive with a stop at the local police station so you can give yourself up before the local constabulary come knocking at your door. Does it look like a 911? Well, the uninitiated might think so, but visually at least, the Cayman is these days no longer a lesser, rather clumsy copy of that car. Instead, this is a different, slightly smaller, more agile looking coupe that in this 982 series form shares only its bonnet, boot and windscreen with the previous 981 generation Cayman that Porsche launched back in 2012. This car exemplifies the German brand's belief in gently evolving its models rather than trying to reinvent them every time. That's not to say though that this design doesn't feature some innovative touches. In fact, it now takes a number of its design cues from Porsche's incredible 918 hybrid supercar. These headlamps, which are larger than before, get more prominence on the wings and they feature four LED daytime running lights that sit at the corners of the main bi-xenon lamp units. Also rather pretty are these slender lights that sit above those much larger air intakes. Those are there for extra cooling and they represent perhaps the most prominent visual expression of this model's new turbo engine concept. It's all part of a look that now asserts itself rather more stridently. 
Long gone are the days when Caymans used to borrow body panels like the doors from the 911. And this one is further distinguished from its sister car thanks to the way that the uh, wing tops rise well above the bonnet line. From the side, there's the trademark Cayman profile, but look more closely and you begin to better appreciate the care that's been taken in subtly incorporating those new body panels. The wings hunker more snugly around the wheels and the doors have these scalloped forms that help channel refreshing air to those vents set just in front of the rear wheel arches. Even the door mirrors and the door handles have been redesigned, intricately fashioned to save weight and also to slip through the air more cleanly. There's interest in the restyled wheels too. Uh, you get 18 inch alloys with black brake calipers on the standard 718 Cayman, uh, while 19 inches with red calipers are fitted to this S model. Uh, here they've been upgraded to these lovely 20 inch Carrera Sport rims. A more important 78 series change we need to note is that this time around, the wheels at the rear are each half an inch wider than before, and that's to improve lateral dynamics, and they're further enhanced by Grippier Pirelli P0 tires. Move to the back of the car and as at the front, the reprofiled bumpers and the more defined bodywork creases create a more purposeful stance. And also as at the front, the thin and stylized LED light units borrow their design from that exotic 918 hybrid model. The clusters are separated by a dark trim strip that's emblazoned with retro Porsche script. Above that's a spoiler that can be manually activated or which rises automatically at uh, 74 miles an hour for high speed stability. And further down, uh, there's a deep bumper with a matte black lower section uh, highlighted by twin tailpipes in this Cayman S variant. Uh, the standard model has a single exhaust tube. Time to focus on the cabin. Now you want to know what's different and at first glance, just as with the outside, the answer seems to be not a whole lot. Look a little closer though and again, the changes become more apparent. The entire upper part of the dashboard has been redesigned, for example, hence the elegance of these elevated air vents. But you're more likely to notice the installation of the new central PCM, Porsche Communication Management Screen, that really dominates the center stack. Uh, a PCM monitor was available in the previous version of this car, but it used clunky, old-fashioned graphics and it was only offered as a costly extra. This much smarter, a seven inch touchscreen display is standard and it works well, although unfortunately it doesn't exactly come overburdened with standard features. Uh, we were fairly shocked, for example, that on a car of this price, it's necessary to pay extra to upgrade it with elements that are now as commonplace as a DAB radio and Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring. And of course, features like a navigation system and in car Wi Fi also sit on the options list. The steering wheel is a further thing that's been revised for the 718 model line, feeling oh so right in your hands. Whether you stick with this uh, leather bound three spoke item that comes as standard or opt to pay extra for the optional GT sports wheel that's borrowed from the 911. Now, some enthusiasts don't like these spokes being encumbered with the multifunction controls for things like the stereo, uh, the telephone features and the optional sat nav, which has given Porsche the excuse to charge extra for buttons of this sort. Presumably then, these people may also object to another fresh 78 series feature, this steering wheel mounted drive mode controller. It comes included if you pay more for the sport chrono package that many Cayman buyers will want. This well, slightly cheap feeling little dial allows you to alter the drive dynamics of the car via various settings. And as usual with Porsche models, the sport chrono option also gives you this bespoke stopwatch centrally mounted between the air vents on top of the dash. Around the rest of the interior, things are much as before, and that's no bad thing given that Porsche has long set the cabin quality standard in this segment. Rivals like Audi's TT may feature more interesting design, but in terms of trim quality and build integrity, it's really difficult to better what's on offer here. All the materials used have a high grade look and feel, and those who have deep pockets can choose to personalize things to the heart's content with various leather upgrades and colorful trim inserts. As usual with Porsche products, the sheer perfection of the driving position is one of those things that would sell us this car right off the bat. With these superbly supportive sports seats, another key showroom selling incentive. Inevitably, uh, full leather upholstery costs extra, but the standard half Sportex man-made leather, half Alcantara finish is also very attractive. 
The instrument binnacle, well, that's another thing that hasn't changed very much and it didn't need to. Uh, dominated as ever by a rev counter that takes center stage and which has a small digital speedometer at the bottom while an analog speedo sits to the left. On the right hand side of the cluster is a 4.6 inch color screen that shows information from the onboard computer. Uh, it offers a G-force meter and the all important stopwatch function. And it can also display map graphics from the optional satellite navigation system. Um, things we don't like, well, no, not really. Uh, it is a pity that parking sensors aren't standard because over the shoulder visibility is somewhat compromised. Having said that though, the wide windscreen and the relatively thin A pillars do give a great view forward. On to practicality, uh, where you can forget about golf clubs unless you're prepared to take them instead of a passenger. Uh, some models in this segment, like the Audi TTS or the BMW M2, deal with that kind of issue by giving you a pair of small rear seats, but the Cayman's mid-engine design configuration makes that impossible. Now that is fair enough, but it would be nice to see some sort of effort made to provide storage behind the seats. So has that been achieved here? Uh, well, yes and no. There simply isn't any room behind these seats for the kind of little luggage net or small compartment that you do get in some two-seater sports cars. But if you look a little further back, there's this shallow carpeted area beneath the rear screen uh, with tie-down points and deep lidded storage cubbies either side of it. In the cockpit itself, the door bins are small and shallow, as is the glove box. Uh, you do, though, get Porsche's trademark pop-out cup holders and this small coin area below the gear stick. Plus, there's this storage compartment between the seats, which incorporates an optional wireless charging mat and a USB point. Either way, uh, you can top up your phone out of sight. Now, the phone charging mat is included with the optional Connect infotainment system upgrades, and it will also boost your mobile reception. As for luggage space, well, the mid-mounting of the Cayman's flat six engine has always been a big plus in this regard. Okay, so your service technician might not immediately agree, but you will value the utility of having two boot options. A 150 litre area at the front, which can easily accommodate two or three squashy bags, and a further 184 litres of shallower but wider storage at the back. Uh, now that, in combination, is about as much space as you get in the boot of a Ford Focus. You didn't expect that, did you? <laughs> now, of course, neither of those compartments uh, can offer a space that's as broad or practical as that you get in a rival high-powered hot hatch, but such are the compromises that one has to make for mid-engine handling purity. The 718 Cayman lineup isn't especially hard to get to grips with. Uh, choose either the 2 litre 718 Cayman entry level variant or this 2.5 litre 718 Cayman S and then decide whether you want a manual gearbox or whether you're happy to find around £2,000 more for your car to be fitted with the PDK automatic transmission. Budget from around the £43,000 mark for the base model or from around the £52,000 mark for this 718 Cayman S. Now previously, Cayman pricing has been pitched above that of its Boxster Roadster counterpart, but that policy has been reversed for this 718 model, uh, with this fixed top variant now delivering a model for model saving of just under £2,000 in comparison to its mechanically identical uh, soft top stablemate. Now if you're wondering about the price gap between this four-cylinder turbo model and an equivalent six-cylinder turbo Porsche 911, well, let's tell you that a uh, base 370 bhp Carrera Coupe version of that car costs a cool £26,000 more than this comparably performing 350 bhp 718 Cayman S. Makes you think, doesn't it? So on to the value proposition offered up by 718 Cayman pricing against more directly comparable rivals. Now if you want to look at what we'd see as the closest alternatives, then you'll find that Audi and BMW coupe models provide them. If your focus is the 2-litre standard Cayman, uh, then the options are the 305bhp Audi TTS and the 335bhp BMW M240i. If you can stretch to this 2.5-litre Cayman S, though, the alternatives are the 395bhp 
bhp audi tt rs and the 370 bhp bmw m2 now predictably choosing a tt or an m power 2 series will save you money over porsche prices uh, to be specific going for one of the audis will save you around two thousand pounds while opting for one of the bmws will save around seven thousand pounds which might initially be tempting given that on paper the performance stats of those alternative models are quite up to matching their cayman counterparts on the road though it's a different story no audi tt or bmw 2 series coupe can ever deliver quite the focused driving experience that you'll get in a cayman a pricier £56,000 Lotus Exige could do that, and then some, uh, but you could never use one of those every day. Look elsewhere and the comparisons begin to look a bit tenuous. Uh, there are versions of BMW Z4 and Mercedes SLC priced in the same ballpark as both Cayman variants, but of course they're Roadster models, so they're really more direct alternatives to Porsche's 718 Boxster. Uh, stick to fixed top coupes and all the alternatives cost more. Spending around £50,000 on, say, an Alfa Romeo 4C or the Renault Sport engineered Alpine A110 would only get you performance that's comparable to a much cheaper 2.0-litre 718 Cayman. As for Jaguar's F-Type Coupe, well, you'd have to spend around £50,000 on the 300 PS 2.0-litre version of that car or around 53,000 on the 340 PS 3 litre V6 model. And in neither case would you be able to quite match the speed and the handling of this 718 Cayman S. If having considered all of that, you conclude that it is some sort of 718 Cayman that you really want, then you're going to need to know whether the list price will deliver a decent standard of spec or whether, as often happens with Porsche models, you're going to need to spend significantly more to get your car fitted out with a reasonable level of kit. So let's take a look. All 718 Cayman models feature bison on headlamps, LED tail lights, uh, LED daytime running lamps and an auto deploying rear spoiler. Plus, as usual, uh, track experience day at Porsche's Silverstone Driving Centre is also included in the price. Uh, inside a standard, all variants include sport seats uh, to provide electric rake adjustment and which are trimmed in Sportex man-made leather with Alcantara centre sections. Uh, there's proper stitched leather for the steering wheel and the gear shifter along with air conditioning. Uh, infotainment, now that's taken care of by a centre dash 7-inch PCM Porsche Communications Management colour touchscreen uh, with many of the uh, monitor's functions also duplicated onto a 4.6-inch display in the instrument binnacle. Laudably, the PCM setup includes the Porsche vehicle tracking system as standard, and that'll give you a bit of extra peace of mind when you're parking your car in urban areas. Um, plus, it also includes an eight-speaker, 150-watt sound package plus audio system. The wheels are a key differentiation point between the 2.0-litre and 2.5-litre models. Uh, the base version features 18-inch rims with black calipers, while the S variant gets 19-inch alloys with red calipers. And it also features twin exhausts rather than the single tailpipe. Other extra niceties that are granted to uh, S model buyers as standard include sport pedals and real leather part trimming for the seats that's also extended onto the door panels and the centre console storage compartment. On to options. Uh, the most important one to consider is probably the Sport Chrono package. And that's something you have to have if you want the steering wheel mounted driving mode selector that allows you to set the car up to suit the way that you want to drive via normal Sport, Sport Plus and individual settings. Uh, as usual with Porsches, uh, this package includes a lap timer clock in the center of the dash top, plus there are dynamic engine mounts that will make the car feel stiffer through the corners and which will prevent any vibration from the motor finding its way into the cabin. Uh, if you specify that Sport Chrono option on a Cayman with PDK automatic transmission, you also get two further features. So there's launch control for Grand Prix style getaways and a sport response button in the center of the mode controller that uh, will precondition the drivetrain for maximum acceleration over 20 seconds for swifter overtaking. 
As for other optional dynamic driving features, well, you'll probably want to consider the PASM, Porsche Active Suspension Management Adaptive Damping System, uh, that lowers the car by 10 millimeters. Uh, you can activate PASM through a dedicated button. And if you've got that Sport Chrono Driving Mode dial, damping will also be tweaked as you switch through the various settings that are provided. Uh, 718 Cayman S buyers, meanwhile, get two PASM options, uh, the second one being an even more focused setup that lowers the car by 20 millimeters. Uh, what else? Well, keen drivers will also want to look at the PTV, Porsche Torque Vectoring System, that includes a mechanically locking rear differential and which helps you get the power down through the bends. Uh, that would be very nice to have on a track day, and that's the kind of environment that the fearsomely expensive optional Porsche ceramic composite brakes are designed for with their race developed six piston aluminium calipers. For those people who are keener on town driving, Power Steering Plus is an option that gives you more assistance at low speeds while retaining decent feel at higher velocities. Now we could do without that, but we'd certainly want the optional sports exhaust system that gives you a more dynamic engine soundtrack at the press of a button and which can be ordered with either silver or black finished tailpipes. Lighting, that also deserves your attention. Uh, you'll be offered the option of upgrading the standard bi-xenon headlamps to full LED units. And whether you take that up or not, there's also the chance to pay extra for the PDLS, Porsche Dynamic Light System, that offers speed-sensitive headlight range control. We'd also strongly recommend that you pay extra for the Park Assist front and rear parking sensors to take all the guesswork out of those awkward parking maneuvers. Or better still, go for an optional reversing camera. The other key area into which you'll probably need to assign extra Cayman budget concerns infotainment. Uh, the Porsche Communications Management infotainment screen may now be standard across this model range, but it doesn't actually include many features as standard. Um, you'll be offered the chance to upgrade it with a navigation module, and that will include voice control. And whether or not you do, there's the further chance of adding in two additional packages. So as a starting point, the Connect Mode Pack will give you a DA radio, smartphone mirroring, and in the compartment between the seats, a smartphone storage tray that will boost your handset's reception. If you stretch to the Pricey Connect Plus pack, you get a telephone module, wireless internet access, real-time traffic information, and access to images from Google Earth and Google Street View. Uh, the Connect Plus module also interacts with a downloadable Porsche Connect app, which will give you a music streaming function, and which will allow you to transfer destinations stored in the address book or the calendar of your smartphone directly to the car. Those uh, then are the key options you'll need to consider, but of course there are many others. Uh, the sports seats can be heated and or ventilated, and they can feature full 14-way electric operation, full leather trim, and power adjustment for the side bolsters. Or you could go for sports bucket seats made from lightweight carbon fiber and fiberglass for the ultimate race car look and feel. Uh, onto the steering wheel, which can be embellished with multifunction buttons and heat for the rim. Uh, we would prefer to upgrade the helm to the smaller diameter 911 style GT sports wheel. On a base Cayman, you might also want to add in the sports style pedals too. Audio files, well, they'll want to look at the upgraded 10 speaker, 505 watt Bose surround sound system, or if money's no object, the even more desirable 12 speaker, 820 watt Burmester high end setup. There's even a TV tuner option if you want it. Other extras you might want to look at include power folding mirrors, auto dimming mirror faces, cruise control, a keyless entry and drive system, two zone automatic climate control and headlamp washers. The finishing touch would be the light design package which fills the cabin with dimmable LEDs for a unique nighttime ambiance. Uh, we'd want this bespoke luggage kit that helps you make the very most of that restricted boot space and possibly also items like cargo liners for the boot areas and a car cover to protect that paintwork uh, overnight during the winter months. On a base 2 litre 718 Cayman, we'd suggest you upgrade to this S model's larger 64 litre fuel tank. And we would also recommend the option Porsche offers of personally collecting your car from the Zuffenhausen factory. 
On to aesthetics. Uh, now, Porsche has introduced a number of brighter colors with the 718 series Cayman model. And if you really want to stand out, this extra cost Miami blue shade is a really good example. Uh, there are plenty of alloy wheel choices too, including this particular car's larger 20 inch rim sizes if you want them. Plus, you can have the alloys finished either in body color or in various shades of black or gray. Uh, there's a sport design exterior trim package too. Inside, you can add extra leather around the cab you can have the Porsche crest embossed on the headrests or go for a full red themed leather interior package. We would be more tempted to trim the wheel, the gear stick and the roof lining in optional race style Alcantara. Alternative cabin finishing is also available in carbon, aluminium and stainless steel or if you really have to, mahogany. And you can change the colour of the instrument dial facings and seat belts as well as adding in branded and illuminated door sill guards if you want them. Um, everything from the door handles to the headlamp cleaning system can be painted in high gloss black if you wish. And at a price you can even get your key painted in the same colour as the body. So finally, let's tell you about safety provision. All mainstream 718 Cayman models come with twin front side and curtain airbags integrated as part of the Porsche side impact protection system. You also get tyre pressure monitoring, uh, the usual braking aids and PSM, Porsche Stability Management Traction Control. Uh, go for the optional Sport Chrono Pack and your Cayman will also feature an extra PSM Sport setting which will allow the driver to throw the car around a little more without intervention, yet which also keeps a safety net in place should ambition get the better of your talent. Uh, there's also a standard multi-collision braking system. Now that will automatically brake the car after you've hit something and help to prevent further impacts. Now if you're going to be carrying kids in that passenger seat, well you'll want to pay extra for an option that'll give you an Isofix child seat fastening and an airbag cutout switch. Want to go further? Well, you could upgrade the optional cruise control system to one featuring radar-driven adaptive technology, so your Cayman will automatically maintain a safe distance to the car in front at speeds between 18 and 130 miles an hour. Uh, lane change assist, that's another extra, and that will warn you if you're drifting out of lane at highway speeds. Uh, there's also a speed limit indicator that recognises traffic signs and shows them on the central Porsche communication management display. Here, of course, is where Porsche's decision to downsize the Cayman's engines really ought to pay off. Not that the company likes that phrase, right-sizing is the term that it prefers, referring to the fact that downsizing taken too far can actually negatively affect running cost efficiency with uh, small but overworked turbo units struggling to provide the uh, expected levels of performance. There's nothing like that here, of course, although the gains aren't quite as significant as perhaps you might have expected the radical engine change to have created. Partly that's because, a little disappointingly, the change from flat six to flat four cylinder power hasn't really saved any weight. Uh, despite losing two cylinders, uh, the new engine's only five kilos lighter than its predecessor, and all of that gain is swallowed up by the extra equipment features added into this 718 model line. Privately, Porsche's engineers admit that in normal driving, the fuel efficiency of this turbo model isn't actually very much different to that of the normally aspirated predecessor. Publicly, though, the company claims a 13% improvement, although you'll only really appreciate that to any significant extent if you pay extra for the PDK automatic gearbox. It's with this transmission that the bulk of the efficiency development work appears to have taken place. Uh, the box now able to slip its two clutches to create interim so-called virtual gears at certain speeds and certain engine loads, rather than switching into a higher ratio that might tax the engine a little bit more. Plus, PDK models get a coasting function that disengages the engine from the gearbox at cruising speeds to reduce friction and drag so the car can travel further without using more energy. It all explains why a PDK Auto 718 Cayman is usefully more efficient than a manual stick shift model. Uh, to be specific, on a 2 litre 718 Cayman with PDK, you're looking at 40.9 mpg on the combined cycle and 158 grams per kilometre of carbon dioxide emissions. For the manual derivative, the figures are 38.2 mpg and 168 grams per kilometre. 
go for the 2.5 litre 718 Cayman S PDK model and those figures rise to 38.7 mpg and 167 grams per kilometre and that's an improvement on the equivalent manual variant showing of 34.9 mpg and 184 grams per kilometre. Whatever your choice of transmission, your returns will be aided by an engine start-stop system uh, that works not only when you come to a stop, but also cuts the engine at speeds of four miles an hour or less wherever possible. As a result of all this, driven with some consideration, you could expect a PDK-equipped 2-litre 718 Cayman to give you 450 miles of range uh, from its 54-litre fuel tank between fill-ups. Uh, with this 2.5-litre S version, that figure rises to 500 miles thanks to this variant's larger 64-litre fuel tank. Uh, pie in the sky? Well, perhaps. After all, if you use this car as intended, then most of the time you won't be driving particularly responsibly. In which frame of mind you can expect to see your fuel returns plummet into the low 20s. True, the same can be said of obvious rivals, but we can't help feeling this Cayman's greater dynamic reserves will see it being driven harder more of the time. One area where this Porsche will be almost certain to save you money though is when you come to sell it. Residual values easily outstripping those of obvious rivals. Uh, after three years and or 36,000 miles, expect a 2 litre 718 Cayman to hang on to around 55% of its original list price. With the 2.5 litre 718 Cayman S, uh, that number is closer to 50%, but that's still a few percentage points above what you get with something like a BMW M2 and around 10% more than you get from a comparable Audi TT. It all explains why this Porsche is cheaper to finance than you might expect it to be. As for insurance, well, that is rated Group 42 for the 718 Cayman and Group 44 for the 718 Cayman S. Uh, to give you a bit of class perspective on that, uh, a BMW M2 is rated at Group 42, an Audi TT RS is at Group 43, and a Jaguar F-Type 3 litre V6 340 PS is up at Group 46. Servicing, well, that might cost you a little more than with obvious competitors like those. Uh, Porsche spares are never the cheapest. Still, scheduled servicing intervals are reasonably well spread. They're every 20,000 miles or two years, whichever comes first. Uh, you'll need to budget around 500 pounds for a minor service, but over 600 pounds for a major one. Uh, a simple brake fluid change costs around 100 pounds. Now, given that all of this sort of thing can add up, it's uh, rather surprising that the company hasn't copied other brands and offered a range of prepaid servicing packages at point of purchase. But the dealers do operate a fixed price servicing regime, uh, so you will always know exactly what work will be carried out and what it's going to cost. What else? Um, well, there's the usual three-year unlimited mileage warranty, and that can be extended by either one or two further years at extra cost. Cayman owners also get a three-year breakdown recovery package, a three-year paint warranty, and a 12-year anti-corrosion guarantee. If Porsche had launched the Cayman with four cylinders from the very beginning, no one would have had anything but praise to shower on this car. If you can afford one, after all, there is very little not to like about this class-leading sports coupe. As it is, though, there's a danger that this model will be forever remembered as the one with the downsized engine. So it's important here that we put the record straight. The power you have is surely more important than the cylinder count, and this improved 718 Cayman is significantly faster than either of its predecessors. Beyond that, though, we've tried to show in this film why a flat four format better suits this car in terms of its responsible development, its market positioning, and even its historical context. There is a price to pay for that, of course, and just like the Cayman's other admirers, we miss in this 982 series car the sonorous howl under full throttle that so characterized the previous versions. On balance though, we'd argue that the gains made here make that sacrifice worthwhile. Which is not to say that we think this 718 Cayman's perfect. There are equipment features lacking in the standard tally that you should never have to pay extra for in such an expensive sports car. Especially one that can sometimes cost significantly more than direct alternatives in this sector once you've taken everything into account. 
Still, if you can afford this Porsche's premium, you'd like a fixed top model and you are shopping in this part of the sports car segment, we think you'll absolutely want a 718 Cayman. It's the best car of its kind that money can buy. There's nothing else needs to be said 